Turn in your Bible to the book of Psalms, Psalm 10 in particular. You know, there's a lot of talk and uh, about the Illuminati and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission and the Bilderbergers and the Jesuits and the Vatican and the Masonic Lodge and all these different things. And uh, that stuff's real. I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, it's all just conspiracy theory. It's, none of that stuff is true. And you look and you see these dastardly deeds that they're doing and how they're they're causing the integration of Europe to destroy Europe and, and they're and they're causing this race war stuff here in America and they're they're destroying the Constitution and they're destroying it. It's, it's just these people are very, very wicked. And it sometimes can really get you down. And sometimes you can get kind of fearful of that stuff and you can kind of think to yourself, what if they take over? What's going to happen to me and all this? Psalm 10, we're actually, my wife and I are going through the, and our son, we're going through the book of Psalms right now in our morning devotions. And I'll tell you what, Psalm 10 has some really good stuff in it. You know, and I just, I, I read it and it was just like, I just need to make a quick video. Just going through this thing, expository, little short study. I don't even have any notes for this. We're just going to read it. I'm going to make some comments, you know, quote some other scriptures and things. Really, really a good psalm to remember in a time like this when there's just so much evil in the world. Let's read it. Psalm 10, verse 1. Why standest thou afar off, O Lord? Why hidest thou thyself in times of trouble? Doesn't it feel like that sometimes? Sometimes you can, you can take your eyes off Jesus Christ and things start to get kind of scary. You got to remember this verse here in the old hymn that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in His wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in light of His glory and grace. Yeah, keep that in mind. He's our hope. Verse 2, The wicked in his pride doth persecute the poor. Let them be taken in the, de in the devices that they have imagined. Again, remember that. All of these big secret societies, all these powerful men, the multi-billionaires, the, these big fa rich families in Italy and things like this and all this other stuff, they're going to be taken in their own devices. When the rapture happens, they got seven years. Thousands of years to build their kingdoms, to build their riches, to build their wealth, and it's wiped out in seven years. And the Vatican gets wiped out in one hour. Revelation chapter 18. Very interesting. Verse 3. For the wicked boasteth of his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth. Again, you know, what do you do with this whole thing? Christians go through the time of Jacob's trouble? No. That time period is for who the Lord abhors. All the people that are left behind are the ones that God abhors. Now, God will seal 144,000 Jews, and God's going to save a great multitude, which no man can number, Revelation chapter 7. But the point is, everybody that's left behind is because they rejected Jesus Christ. Interesting. Verse 4, The wicked through the pride of his countenance will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Isn't it amazing how atheism is just on the rise? All these people. Atheism is just god hateism, is what we really should call it. You know, they don't really believe that there is no God. They want to believe that there is no God. It's a desire of their heart. They hate God. And you can see it in their comments. Verse 5, His ways are always grievous. Thy judgments are far above out of His sight. As for all His enemies, He puffeth at them. I love that. You know, these guys down here, Oh, show me your God. Oh, you're And they say all these blasphemous things, and God's up there, and He goes... <laughs> That's what God thinks of them. He mocks them, actually, if you read over, and I think it's Proverbs chapter 1. Interesting. But God looks down and He goes, <laughs> that's what that text means. Interesting picture of the Lord there. Uh, let's see, where are we at here? Verse 6, He hath said in his heart, I shall not be moved, for I shall never be in adversity. <laughs> My bank account is FDIC insured. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay, right, you know. I have a secret military base that's hidden underground. <laughs> you know, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. Well, I hate to tell you there, Jesuits and all the other, you know, secret society people that think that you're getting one over on the Lord and things. Uh, uh, yeah, things are going to get bad for you. Verse 7, 
His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. He sitteth in the lurking places of the villages, in the secret places. Doth he murder the innocent? His eyes are privily sit against, set against the poor. All these high-level Jesuits and things like this, they'll murder innocent people. Child sacrifice. They'll have little you know, children and stuff like that, they'll murder them. Not realizing that they're just murdering children that get to go to heaven then. They die under the age of accountability. But it's interesting. It's describing perfectly these secret society people. Verse 9. He lieth in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lieth to wait in wait to catch the poor. He doth catch the poor when he draweth him into his net. That's what these rich people do. They're continually scamming poor people. Trying to keep us all poor. Verse 10. He coucheth and humbleth himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. Hmm. He hath said in his heart, God hath forgotten. He hideth his face. He will never see it. <laughs> you know, these people, they're all practicing atheists. They hate God. They hate the thought of God and everything. God's forgotten. There's no God. I'm getting away with it. See, look, I did it. I got away with it. That means that there's no God. That's how stupid these people are. Verse 12. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up thine hand, forget not the humble. Wherefore doth the wicked contemn God? He hath said in his heart, Thou wilt not require it. In other words, I'm not going to have to answer for any of this stuff. There is no God. I won't have to answer. There's no judgment coming. Verse 14. Thou hast seen it, for thou beholdest mischief and spite to requite it with thy hand. The poor committeth himself unto thee. Thou art the helper of the fatherless. Amen. Break thou the arm of the wicked and the evil man. Seek out his wickedness till thou find none. Hmm. You say, when's that going to happen? Look at the next verse, 16. The Lord is king forever and ever. The heathen are perished out of his land. Oh boy, get a hold of that one. Jesus Christ has promised physical land on the earth. You say, where's that? I'm so glad you asked. Right there. You say, what is that? The flag of Jerusalem. With a line of the tribe of Judah. Isn't that interesting? Jerusalem, the city of the great king, according to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 11, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent take it by force. And yet this city that is inhabited by Jews that reject Jesus Christ as their Messiah, they put on their flag the line of the tribe of Judah, which statement only appears in the book of Revelation. Isn't that interesting? You see, it doesn't matter who fights over that land, it's eventually going to be the property of Jesus Christ. And when that happens, guess what happens before then? Oh, Matthew chapter 25 describes it as the judgment of the nations. Hmm. We go out as Christians, we go out and we gather all the people that survived that time of Jacob's trouble and we bring them to that judgment of the nations. And the people that are lost immediately go right down into hell. And those that are saved go into the kingdom. You say, man, when's that going to happen? A couple hundred years from now? No, after the rapture, it's going to be seven years. Seven short little years. Verse 17, Lord, thou hast heard the desire of the humble. Thou wilt prepare their heart. Thou wilt cause thine ear to hear, to judge the fatherless and the oppressed, that the man of the earth may no more oppress. All of these rich, powerful secret societies and all these Jesuits and all these other people like that. And I say the Jesuits because you look at the Jesuits, they educate people and then they, those people go into the Masonic Lodge and then they'll go into the CFR and whatever else. And you look, you go up, you go up the the staircase, so to speak, you'll find the Jesuits up above. You know, they're behind nearly everything. And people say, oh, you're, you're conspiratorial. No, actually, I read my Bible in Revelation 17, which says the mystery Babylon is the mother of the whores, mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. So you see, the Vatican is behind all the evil. According to Scripture, she's the mother of abomin abominations. 
So don't tell me, oh, you're saying the Vatican's behind everything and you're crazy. Oh, well, then the Bible's crazy. But you see, that whole kingdom, that whole system that we can look out and we can get real fearful of and everything else because they're doing all this bad stuff, that whole system's only got a couple years left. Isn't that wonderful? We have those promises that we can look in Psalm 10 and say, the prospering of the wicked is but for a moment. Don't worry about it. Hey, Christian, your job down here is an ambassador of Jesus Christ. You're to preach the gospel to every creature. That's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to worry about voting in the right people so that they can fight off the bad guys. Don't worry about it. All right? I'm not saying that we shouldn't, uh, you know, back in the past they were wrong for becoming politically active and things like this and for fighting physically against the Vatican. Uh, you know, if there's a bunch of Vatican soldiers coming around and stuff like that and they're raping and whatever else, we fight them, fight them. Uh, it, it becomes a physical thing then at that point uh, simply because they're, they're not good rulers according to Romans chapter 13. They're not the kind of rulers that you submit yourself to. Rulers are not a terror to good works but to the evil. But when that flips, now you don't submit to them, okay? But uh, the, the main thing that I'm trying to get through to you is what will keep that away is not constitutional reform or uh, civil liberties or any of that stuff. What keeps the evil at bay is men and women of understanding that are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. That's what keeps that stuff at bay. So don't get your eyes off of where they need to be. You understand what I mean? Read Psalm 10 when you start to get a little bit afraid. When you start to look and you start to see all the bad stuff happening and all these evil organizations and everything else. Psalm 10. I actually have written there the politician psalm. <laughs> you know? Very true. So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. Stay strong, brethren. We don't have much time left.